Christ, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. For your mercy and favor upon your children. We are here again in your presence. To be directed and blessed by you. Give us your inner grace to set our eyes on the things that are above, both now and forevermore. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Greet your neighbor, Shalom. Greet your neighbors, Shalom. Viewers, greet your neighbors, Shalom. Let the peace of God. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit be with you forever and ever and ever in Jesus Christ's name. You may joyfully have your seats in the presence of God. Turn with me to the book 
of Matthew chapter 14. We are going to take our Bible studies today from the book of Matthew chapter 14. The book of John. Chapter 14. The book of Romans, chapter 8, 1 John, chapter 5. Proverbs, chapter 16. And Psalm chapter 1, 8, meaning Psalm chapter 18. Let us take the first chapter we've mentioned, the book of Matthew chapter 14. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. And therefore, these powers are at work in him. For Herod had laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had said to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. It is as good as saying because they counted John the Baptist as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Therefore, he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. So she, having been prompted by her mother, said, Give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, he commanded it to be given to her. So he, so he sent and had John beheaded in prison. And his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl. And she brought it to her mother. Then his disciples came. Whose disciples? John the Baptist's disciples. Then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it. And went and told Jesus. Verses 13. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. Brethren, these chapters we've mentioned, particularly this very one, the book of Matthew, chapter 14, will bring us to today's message. 
or rather Bible studies titled Learn to Overcome Your Fears. Tell your neighbor, learn to overcome your fears. Smile and say that. Say, neighbor, learn to overcome your fears. Verses 13. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitude heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. It is not all about what happened. It is all about the way a manner you wisely handled what happened in God's own way. When it comes to decision making, fear in your heart must be crucified. Write it down. When it comes to decision making the fears in your heart must be crucified sin brings fear Satan appeared to Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden in the form of snake and shifted the fear of the maker to the fear of what was made. Before the snake arrived, before the serpent arrived, Adam and Eve were only afraid of God. When Eve accepted the offer to disobey God, fear crept in. When Adam finally listened to the wife, and disobeyed God. Fear crept in. He could not even stand. To behold the presence of God. He was afraid. He hid himself. Sin. Brings fear. Satan makes use of your sin. To create fear. In your heart. What does fear do? Fear prevents you from making important decisions that will change your life for good. Most of the businesses you were afraid to do were the businesses that became successful in the hands of people that were simply bold business men and women. Most of the careers or courses you have failed to study happened that way because of fear. Those who finally studied the course we are extremely bold at the beginning to take their decision. Fear prevents you from making very important decisions that will change your life for good. 
If you want to start winning, you have to start winning within, in your heart. Learn to overcome your fears. Many fear oaths they have taken, even when the oaths are contrary to the word of God. Like Herod. Snake, the king of fear, crept in, caused Adam and Eve to commit sin, used their sins to attack, shifted a fear from the maker of heaven and earth to what was simply made, or we snake was one. The snake still exists today. And controls lives of people that are dominated by fear. The spirit God gave to Adam and Eve at the beginning. We are not the spirit of bondage to fear again. But allow that spirit to be driven out through sin. Winners are bold servants of God. Winners are who? Can I hear you? Winners are bold servants of God. Winners are bold children of God. It is not all about what happened. It is all about the way and manner you handle it in God's own way. Jesus Christ heard what happened. Look at what he did here. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Jesus Christ heard what happened. I made a decision to go further to prayer. What about you? What have you heard? What are you hearing? And what are you going to hear? It is not all about what happened. It is all about the way and manner you handle what happened. Those who want to overcome will always run to God for help in prayers. Write it down. Those who want to do what? To overcome will always run to God in prayers for help. The book of Proverbs chapter 16 verses 3 says, and I quote, Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. 
those who run to God for help in prayers will always overcome. Jesus never said, let me look for other people and tell them what I have just heard. He went to God in prayers. What about you? What have you been hearing? And how have you been handling what you've been hearing? What happened and how have you been handling what happened? The heart of a man plans his ways. But the Lord directs his steps. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 9. The heart of a man plans his what? His ways. But the Lord directs his steps. If you don't commit yourself to God, if you don't run to God for help in prayers, how will you overcome? How? When the snake came to Eve, if she had run to God and said, look at what I'm hearing. You gave us an instruction that we must not do this. But look at what another being is telling me. What must I do? She would not have sinned against God. If Adam had run to God in prayers for help and said, Lord God Almighty, my wife has already fallen because she did not run to you for help in prayers. And I don't want to make that mistake. Yeah, I'm Lord. Look at what she told me that the snake said. Look at what she did because the snake Push her to do that. What do I do? He would not have sinned. Fear would not have crept into his heart. Learn to overcome the enemies of your life. Learn to overcome your fears. From this little explanation, you agree with me that fear is the most dangerous weapon Satan uses to destroy human beings. Fear is the most dangerous weapon Satan uses to prevent many from making vital decisions that would change their lives for good. Fear is not an enemy of Satan. Fear is a friend of whom? Satan. Fear is your greatest enemy. You must learn to overcome. Let us read on. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. To do what? To seek the face of God. 
and to commit everything he heard into God's hand in prayers. Many would jump and celebrate only when someone else is sad. Many would jump and celebrate only when someone else is demoted. Many will not mourn with those who mourn. And laugh with those who laugh. Jesus Christ did not go into celebration. He went to prayer. He was supposed to remain where he was. But when the news got to him, he was sober. He went to a quiet place to seek the face of God. What about you? Those who celebrate when someone falls, Those who celebrate when someone falls are possessed by Satan and therefore need deliverance. Let us read on. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Can you see what it takes for you to be used by God to heal the sick? You cannot win the souls of a person you hate. You cannot win the soul of a person you hate. You cannot pray for someone you hate and expect God to answer your prayers. Look at the condition here that Jesus met before he attended to the sick person. If you see any ministry that God is using to set all the sick people completely free, you must know that the level of God's compassion, the level of God's compassion in the heart of the ministers is purely coming from God and not from man. Let us see what happened here. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. You want the power to heal every kind of sickness and diseases. But you have selected the people you want to attend to. You say, oh, it's for black people. No, it is just for white people. No, they are, should be my family members. Or people that give me money and sow seed to my ministry. Look at the condition here. Jesus Christ did not give any condition here. He was simply moved. With the love of God in his heart to attend to all of them, not some. Why is your own compassion limited 
unhindered by race, state of origin, nationality, place of worship, religion, age, or marital status. Why? And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. The disciples were already following Jesus, but they lacked the necessary compassion to attend to the sick. They were simply creating reasons why these people should be sent away. But Jesus did not. The circumstances at hand did not allow them to see God's sufficiency and provision. To the natural mind, they were only giving good suggestions because the people were too many and they needed to be cared for by allowing them to go back and eat. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. If you cannot, Jesus can. If you cannot see anything, even as you are sitting down now, Jesus can. If you cannot hear what is happening, even as you are watching, Jesus can. If you cannot see the divine provision that are made available by God for everyone, Jesus can. They were panicking. What would happen? We can't even perform these kind of miracles. Look at thousands of people. How do we feed them? They were afraid. Their own advice, we are not coming from faith, but from fear. Their advice was not coming from where? Faith, but from where? Fear. Who is advising you? And who is the source of the advice? Who is advising you and where is the advice coming from? Faith focuses on Jesus Christ and his sufficiency, not on your fears. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. 1 John chapter 5, verses 4. What are you focusing on? What are you listening to? Who is advising you within and without? There are strange voices speaking to you. Some will say, that business you want to do will not succeed. 
And they will tell you, if you want to succeed, remove so-so and so-so name. So-so and so-so person. So-so and so-so person. If you do not listen to the voice of the Spirit of God to know exactly where this advice is coming from, you will make the mistake. You will live to regret. Where there is fear, there is need for a miracle. Write it down. Where there is what? Fear, there is need for a miracle. Jesus Christ looked behind looked around and saw the enemy of his life, Satan. Bringing in advice to him through the disciples. And he said, no! You give them food. He spoke the word of faith. He said, no! Give them something to eat. What builds faith in the heart of a fearful soul? Faith comes by hearing. And by hearing the word of God. Jesus Christ is the word by whom God speaks to us. He spoke the word to their hearts to build their faith. And said, you give them what? Food. If you lack the spiritual food, which is meant for your soul, your life will be dominated by fear. Write it down. If you lack the word of God, which is the spiritual food for your soul, your life will be dominated by what? F-E-A-R. Fear. The life that is dominated by fear is the life that is not dominated by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word and by hearing the word of God. Romans chapter 10. Verses 17. Miracles cannot be performed where there is no faith. It takes faith to perform a miracle. It takes faith to perform miracles. Miracles are God answering the prayers of his children. If there is nothing to ask for, it means there is no need for God. No one answers prayers faster than God does. No one responds to issues faster than God. No one responds to issues more than God. No one hears more than God. Jesus said to them, you give them food. The words Jesus spoke was enough to build faith in their heart. But they still feared and explained the reasons why they were not ready by themselves to perform the miracles. Let us read on and find out. But Jesus said to them, then they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Look at the reasons they created here. 
And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. These statements were coming from fear, doubt, and unbelief, not from faith. Some will say, I have fibroid. That is why I am buried. The doctor told me that I will never conceive even when they are in the presence of God. What are you saying that have formed your excuses why you should not be healed, delivered, blessed, and saved? What are those things you are saying? What excuses are you giving to your maker that are forming the reasons why miracles should not be performed by God in your own life? Some will say, I owe debts and I'm here. How can the debt be paid? The creditors are waiting for me. Once I leave the church now, they will get me apprehended. This seem to be your own reason not to be blessed. Some will say, I've been to many places in search of solution. Many prayers have been offered, and yet I'm still having these sicknesses and diseases. Here I am again in a place called church. Already, you have created reasons why miracles that will set you free should not happen. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. Let us see how Jesus responded. If you cannot, the grace of God in my life can. Look at what he said here. He said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. What they gave to Jesus was what he used to do the job. There is always things that are given to you by God that are capable of reproducing. Why are they not reproducing? They are not reproducing due to fears in your heart, doubts in your heart, and unbelief in your heart. They were supposed to be used by God to do these kind of miracles. But they gave reasons why they should not be used. And Jesus said, bring them to me. Here, let us read. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. After he said, bring them here to me. Verses 18 again. He said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave them, and the disciples gave to the multitude. He still gave them the chance. 
to share the blessings. What a loving father. Overcome your fears. Your circumstances create reasons why miracles should not be done in your life. But as a child of God, you must learn to overcome your fears. At the beginning of this year, I did say that this year is the year where spiritual warfare will be fought at the highest level. Check and see what is happening. What is happening on ground are already creating panics and fear within and without. You must overcome your fears. You are saying there is no this. There is no that. This is not available. That is not available. High cost of things. These were things that were shown at the beginning of last year. And we summarized everything prophetically so you could stand your ground. You are waiting to see it before you get ready. This message is a prophetic message. Learn to overcome your what? Fears. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass and he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fra fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about five thousand men besides women and children. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Why he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. From one miracle to another, he was always seeking the face of who? God. Committing his works. To God, so that his thoughts would be established. Now, when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. When things are wonderfully done, people always attribute glory to Satan. When things are wonderfully done, miraculously done, those who are led by the spirit of fear always attribute the glory to Satan. For instance, if you are a very, very, very skillful football player that always makes things happen,
in the field of play. They will call you a magical person. As if that skill is coming from Satan and not from God. If you are a God sent minister of God who is highly used by God to make things happen in the body of Christ. They will say that you are using occultic powers to operate. If you are a minister of God that is highly used by God to make things happen in the body of Christ, they will say that you are using occultic powers to operate. Who are those people saying these kind of things? Those who are possessed by evil spirits. Once again, if you are a genuine minister of God who is used highly by God to make things happen, perform miracles, signs and wonders in the body of Christ, those who are possessed by evil spirits will say that you are using occultic powers to operate. What an evil generation. What a fearful and faithless generation. If you cannot, Jesus Christ can. If you cannot help, Jesus Christ can help. If you cannot heal, Jesus Christ can. If you cannot save, Jesus Christ can. If you cannot bless, Jesus Christ can. If you cannot cast out evil spirits, Jesus Christ can. As it was, so it is. Look at what the people that were following him said. We are not even talking about the crowds, the multitudes, or people who never believed in him. They saw what he did. What they never witnessed in their entire lives. And they attributed the glory to ghosts. Let us read again. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Many are still giving glory to the created instead of giving glory to the creator. Many are still giving glory to the created things instead of giving glory to the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Are you one of them? When many are set free from sickness, they call one object and say, yes, I used that object and I'm free. Instead of saying, God Almighty has set me free. When many are being delivered, they will say, I used this and that and the evil spirit that lived in me, we are cast out. Instead of saying that the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit have delivered me. As it was, so it is. 
If your life is dominated by fear, you will always give glory to the created things and not to God. Learn to overcome your fears. Peter was among the people, among the disciples that cried out and said, Ah! Our master is a ghost. He joined to commit the sin. And he quickly pulled himself out. I said, why? Why did I say this? Hey! Why did I say this? Who is controlling you? And who should control you? Why did I say this? Why? He came back to him himself and try to find out the truth from Jesus. Let us see what happened here. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. It is not a crime if you have fallen and you decided to rise. It is not a crime if you have failed and you decided to get back on your feet to succeed. It is not a crime if you are sick and you decided to run to Jesus for healing. It is not a crime if you are backslidden and you decided to stand your ground and say, why did I even commit this kind of sin? My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let me go back to God. Many are committing suicide. Because of guilt of sin. Many are becoming suicidal because of sins they have committed. Many believe that they must not be given another chance to correct their mistakes because their mistakes are too big. Are you one of them? Mistakes are what? Correctable. Run to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Let us read on. And they cried out for fear. Jesus Christ saw fear in the hearts, in the hearts of the disciples, and decided to destroy the root of fear by speaking the word of faith. He responded. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Faith in your heart comes by hearing the word, and by hearing the word of whom? God. Among the disciples, Peter was the only one that opened up his heart and allowed the root of fear in him to be destroyed. Others closed to their hearts. And the words of Jesus landed on a stony heart and fell on the pathway. What about you? You are here today to receive. No one can receive anything from God without faith. Let's see what Peter did here. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on water. One servant of God said, Lord, if it is you, let it rain. And it started raining. It is not a crime for you to find out the truth from God. It is not a crime for you 
to sit back and identify the true voices that are speaking to you, whether they are from God or from Satan. Many are sitting down with many voices speaking to their hearts. Some will tell you sleep. That is why you find many sleeping. Others will tell you commit suicide. What are you living for? You can see that there is no money in the system. 2022 was even better or seemed to be better than the year you have just entered. You can continue like this. Kill yourself. How many times have you bothered, tried to find out, figure out the kind of voice that is speaking to you? Remember Peter did here. Lord, if it is you, command me to do what? Come and walk on water. You that take everything you hear without questioning, whose agent are you? And who are you finally obeying? Write this question. It is very important and will help you. You that take everything you hear without proper examination. Whose agent are you? And whose voices are you obeying? In the Gospel of John chapter 10. From verses 3, 4, 5. Permit me to read quickly. Gospel of John, chapter 10, from verses 3, 4, 5. To him the doors, to him the doorkeeper, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and lays them out. Verses 4. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. You that hear this and hear that and act without proper examination, whose agent are you? Who is leading you? John chapter 10, from verses 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Other disciples heard the voice of Jesus and also heard the voices of fear. And they yielded themselves to the voices of fear. They never bother to examine everything in the light of the words of Jesus. And they never made things happen the way Peter did. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 14. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. 
Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. No one responds faster than Jesus Christ. No one answers prayers weaker than Jesus Christ. When you commit your works to the Lord, Jesus Christ, your thoughts will be established by him. Verses 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Verses 29. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. What is it that has not been possibly done by you? These are the things that can easily be done when you involve Jesus in your life. Open up your heart. Get rid of fears. Learn to overcome your fears. Peter did. And he walked on water. Something that none of the disciples did. Are you waiting for someone in your family to become someone bigger before you become bigger? Are you waiting for someone to be blessed before you become blessed? Are you waiting for your colleagues? Some will say, I am not educated. Some will say, we have never had any graduate in our family. Maybe that is the reason why I have been writing and writing and I have not gotten admission. You quit. You surrendered to your fear. You quit and consequently surrender to your fear. Where there are fears, there are needs for miracles. And the only miracle worker is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. Gone where the days people would say, if you become a minister of God, you will become extremely wretched. Extremely poor. Sick. And abandoned by everyone. There is spiritual revolution. Turning your old ideology to become useless and worthless. If you cannot... Jesus Christ can. It has become a crime to become a minister of God. They say those people that put on one suit and one shoe. Anytime somebody says, I'm into pastoral work, that is the kind of image you paint the person. You say, oh, this one has become a failure forever. Look at the kind of work he has chosen to do. Who is now lying? Tell your neighbor, there is spiritual revolution. Tell your neighbor, there is spiritual revolution. If you cannot, Jesus Christ can. If you cannot help, Jesus Christ can. If you cannot bless, 
Jesus Christ can. If you cannot save, Jesus Christ can. If you cannot redeem, Jesus Christ can. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Your focus is always broken. When you focus on your problems. Write it down. Your focus on Jesus Christ is always broken when you focus on your problems. The fact that Jesus Christ gave Peter command to come to the water did not prevent Peter from encountering spiritual distractors. His spiritual distractors were in form of the disciples that were mocking him and said, we can see that you are very, very arrogant. Going by your request, you even said to our own master that he should ask you to come and do what he's doing. You are very arrogant. Are you not seeing us staying behind? Are we stupid and foolish? You will surely perish in the water, in the sea. Number one. Number two. The waves that were there to distract him. You say that you are a child of God, you are married and wedded, but you are trying to conceive and give birth to children. This can be one of your spiritual distractors. You say that you are a businessman and you are a godly person, always fasting and praying, attending videos, doing your responsibilities in the house of God, but you are also experiencing setback. This can be one of your spiritual distractors. When you focus on your spiritual distractors, your focus on Jesus Christ will instantly be broken. Let your heart your spiritual eyes of faith rise and seek the things that are above, not the things beneath, if you want to remain victorious. If you are looking for a way to overcome, look for Jesus. Focus on him. Stop looking for troubles. And stop focusing on your troubles. Your troubles will always exist until you leave this physical world. Write it down. Your troubles will always exist until you do what? Leave. L-E-A-V-E. -E. Leave this physical world. Why are you focusing on them? Why? That was what Peter did. He was supposed to concentrate on Jesus, focus on him, and get to his destination. But he was spiritually distracted when he focused on the boisterous winds that were against his forward movement toward the Savior of his soul. But one good thing Peter did here, he did not cry to the disciples that were mocking him. 
He did not cry out for help that probably he is expecting to come from his own wife. From his children, parents, siblings, or relatives. He cried out and said, Lord, save me. Many, when they are being attacked in the dream, they cry out, Mommy, Mommy, Daddy, Honey. Many, when they are being attacked in a dream, they wake up with strange cries, calling names of the created things instead of calling the name of the creator. Jesus Christ only responds to the cry that is born of faith, not the cry that is born of fear. Only the cries that are born of faith attract the attention of Jesus Christ. If you cannot save, Jesus Christ can. He saw the thoughts of the disciples that they were all against Peter. He also saw the boisterous wave that they were all against Peter. And he stood and said, but I'm here as the compassionate savior, redeemer of lives. With a single mission of saving souls, he reached out to Peter's hands and rescued him. Who told you that you will not be saved? Who told you that you will not be healed? Who told you that you will not be redeemed? Was Peter abandoned to himself? Can I hear you? Can I hear you? Did Peter die in Was Peter not rescued by Jesus Christ? Can I hear you say he was? Who will rescue your family? Can I hear you? Who will rescue your business? Who will rescue your nation? Who will rescue your leaders? Who will rescue your continent? Who will rescue your spiritual life? Jesus your marriage? Jesus your destiny? Jesus your finances? Jesus your finances? Jesus your children? Jesus your parents? Jesus Who will rescue people in your village? Jesus Who will save you in your dreams? Jesus Can I hear you say Jesus Christ? Shout it louder! Shout it louder! Shout it louder! Call his name louder! Peter cried out and said, Lord, save me. There were reasons for Peter to cry. And that is why you have reasons to run to God today. To ask. I tell you, your prayers will be answered. Your prayers will be answered. Your fears will be defeated. Your shame will be disgraced. Your poverty will be destroyed. Your sicknesses and diseases will be cured. Let us see what happened. You may be seated. 
You may be seated and let's see what happened to Peter. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. When he feared, he began to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Let us see what happened in verses 33. And immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? Remember, Jesus had a power to save him without asking him such spiritual questions. But he did not ignore that. He wanted Peter to know the root of his problem. Many would see you and say you will become prosperous without telling you the cause of poverty. Many would tell you, oh, you will be completely healed without letting you know the cause of the sickness you have. Many will tell you, you will be fruitful without telling you the cause of infertility. Jesus Christ went to the root of the problem of Peter and said, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Today, the ministries should preach message of righteousness. Ministries of Jesus Christ should preach the message of holiness and purity. The ministries of Jesus Christ should preach Pure messages that will stand against sins and sinful desires. The ministries of Jesus Christ are not places you just go and get excited without knowing what you must know. Club, dance, and just go like that. All these have to stop. The Bible says, And they shall know the truth. And the truth will do what? Set them free. And you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Remember why Jesus was still speaking. There were still activities of spiritual distractors of Peter. If you were Peter, on that scene, you would say, Jesus, it's true you have saved me, but you can see the distractors are still very much at work. Some would say, I'm still having pain here. But you could not work, and you are working now. See, it remains small, just small, just small. That is why you are waiting for everything to be completed before you testify. That is why you're waiting for everything to be completed before you make use of the weapons of warfare. Revelation chapter 12, verses 11. And they overcame Satan, 
The devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimonies. And they did not love their life to death, meaning they did not focus on the happenings around them. The ways were still there. Everything was still there. It was, one, it was when they got into the boat that what happened? The winds ceased. When are you waiting to share your testimonies? Only those that work by fear that wait to see before they believe. We walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live and walk by what? Faith. Why do you want to see before you believe? Anytime ministers of God are led by the Spirit of God to give you spiritual declaration for that very week, how do you accept it? Because that counts. If your heart is dominated by doubt, the Bible says, anyone who doubts should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. It's like a man that observes his natural face on a mirror. He says, oh, I look a little bit handsome here. Oh, good. Thank you, Jesus. Walks away and begins to say to himself, how do I look like? Oh, let me go back and look at it again. Oh, I look good. I look good. Goes back and say again, how do I look like? It is even written, let not such person expect to receive anything from the Lord. James chapter 1. Read everything from the beginning to the end. Doubt is Satan. And Satan is who? Doubt. Doubt is the opposite of faith that conquers everything. Peter Sengod himself came out of the boat of doubt and sp spoke the word of faith. Acted and he received. What about you? Learn to overcome your fears. Let us complete reading the whole thing. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. How many Thomas were in that boat? Because they only worshipped him when the whole thing ceased. How many doubters were in that boat? Because all of them only worshipped him when the whole thing ceased. Believing is seeing. Not waiting to see before you believe. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all that, they sent out into all that surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it, we are made perfectly well. Commit your works to the Lord. And your thoughts will be what? Established. That was what we were thinking. If only we could bring the sick people and beg this minister so that the sick people could just touch the hem of his garment. We believe that the sick people will be healed. Let us see what happened to them. 
And when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all that surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Tell your neighbor, it shall be well with my soul today. Come on, say it as you believe it. Say, neighbor, it will be well with my soul today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, it will be well with my business. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will be well with my proposals. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will be well with my ideas. My plans. My plans. My projects. My projects. My nation. My continent and the entire world in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your message that instructed us to learn. To overcome our fears. Fears are there to be conquered by you. Through your word and by your spirit. Fears are there to be conquered. By you the living God almighty. Through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Give all the grace. To receive your grace of faith. And to conquer all our fears. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now I stand against all spirits of fear. The ancient serpent. In charge of fear. In charge of disobedience. In charge of doubt. In charge of rebellion. In charge of sins. And sinful desires. Anywhere you are hiding to operate. In people's hearts. In their minds. In their homes. I command all of you to be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost fire. 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 fire.